Hello viewers, in Gran Turismo 7's most recent update, they finally added an up-to-date GT3 car to the game. This is the Mercedes AMG GT3 20, and it's always good to see a new car added to Group 3. I thought I'd buy it and give it a go in this week's Daily Race B, which just so happens to be a Group 3 race. So five laps around Kyoto, let's find out if this car is actually any good or if the BOP has murdered it to death or if the Toyota Supra is just too OP and is unbeatable anyway. Now first corner, first things first, go for a nice little overtake here on the Renault. The Mercedes with a fairly good launch initially off the line there. So we're going to gain one position. Now I hadn't really raced this all week so I jumped on quite late and uh, just trying to get accustomed not only to playing this game again but also to the car um, but that's why we go from the back to make sure we can just um, not not have to think too much about the faster players and unfortunately here we're going to get caught out in the wrong place at the wrong time 16th place and to be fair 16th is never the right place to be and through this right hand i'm actually going to turn left and put myself in the firing line of this very happy looking photographer gets a nice little snapshot of me before i depart the scene so there we go miles in last place this race pretty much turned into a glorified practice session for me just trying to learn the ins and outs of this car and things i was realizing it's actually a fairly stable car there are moments where the gearing wasn't quite right but overall, it's, it seems to be very drivable, a solid car, just like the 2016 Mercedes AMG that is in the game. It doesn't actually feel completely different, but then again, it is a slightly updated version of the same car. Um, and I had a, a very faint chance here of not finishing last as I was catching up with this Spaniard for P15. Yes, that's right, 15th place, oh my goodness. Um, but I can regretfully announce, as we head through the final corner, that I was actually going to finish last. Now, the fastest lap of this race was a 134.1. I was managing into the 34s, so as we uh, crossed the finish line there, two 134s, a 0.7 and a 0.8. So I'm not a million miles away from the fastest lap, I suppose, but there is room for improvement. There's no question about that. So, race number two... Let's try and seek the aforementioned improvement and get a slightly better result than P16. Uh, shouldn't be too hard. Now, a uh, bit of a pinch point here on the track through the S's. As you see there, the Porsche falling victim at the top of the hill. And uh, Austrian driving a very wide line there. That's going to hand me already two positions up into 13th. Heading down the hill, I felt like, you know what, this guy's right behind. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go defensive. Just to really cement my position here. Make sure we don't lose it. Through this triple chicane, this triple chicane, it really is crucial to your lap time and generally to your success around this track. And you'll see later on in this video how much you have to abuse that thing to really extract maximum lap time. Now, a bit of contact between the BMW and the Supra just in front. Can I capitalise on that? Not quite. Not quite close enough here to take advantage. Coming down the hill though, Belgian kind of forgets to turn left on a left-hander and says hi to Barry R and to last place. I think he goes down to last place. But uh, either way, it's not really my problem anymore. I am now fully involved with this BMW trying to sort out an overtaking opportunity. Not quite close enough into turn one, lap number two. I'm going to try and square off the corner, get a good exit and perhaps engineer a move into the long left at the top of the hill. So these S's are uh, quite tricky to take even when you're on your own but when you're right behind another car, a bit of aero wash and lack of visibility can hinder your performance but we've engineered an opening here with a slight dummy to the right and he opened up the space on the left and boom, that is P11, thank you very much. So let's uh, head through the chicane. Once I've got through here cleanly, I should be able to fully cement this position of P11 and now try to turn my attention on gaining to the cars in front. There was a car off on the right-hand side there, so I went up into P10. 
and through lap three, gaining slowly but surely on this almighty gaggle of five cars, which I now join to make a six. Now the two Supras just in front here, gonna have a nice bit of argy-bargy. One goes wide and then our unceremoniously rejoins for a glorious moment of contact between the two of them. And I'm gonna say thank you very much and move up into eighth place right up behind the Spaniard in the BMW and uh, getting good exits here just not quite able to capitalize there is someone there spinning that is Bob's your uncle underscore GT uh, recovering from some sort of altercation or a spin whatever it was don't know nor do I care because we're trying to battle for P6 the coveted most important position in any race p6 now not a very good line here a little bit too wide and that's something you'll learn from these long left handers you do really want to minimize the distance travel for those long lefts if you go too wide it really does kill your lap time your momentum everything everything in your life will fall apart if you take those corners wrong trust me i've been there and again here look just uh, really getting two wheels onto those curbs both of us taking that nice late apex to get a good drive off the corner but perhaps actually a little bit too wide on the exit but we both copied each other there and so it's uh, kind of as you were now he's going to make a bit of a mistake here it carried a bit too much speed on the grass very easy to do that and to really maximize speed through that chicane you have to run the grass it's kind of silly but that's just how it is and that is going to unstable your car make your car unstable should I say and um, that put me up into P6 now I was hoping to try to gain on P5 but I uh, wasn't quite able to do it the GTR in front actually quite quick and um, I, yeah, I therefore had to turn this into a defensive race trying to protect P6 that's the best I could do so the BMW behind, uh, behind the Spaniard doing quite well stick with me not really give me any rest through to the end of the race my lap times weren't the best on this one but this this race involved a lot more fighting and uh, more overtaking and less clean air and so um, with slower lap times but a better result I was fairly happy this race was pretty good overall I would say go 15 up to 6 and there it is, confirmation that this is indeed Super GT. I decided to update the livery on the car, which is always important, to whip on this lovely Bilstein livery and uh, hopefully do them very proud. Now, the fastest lap in the world was a 132.1 with the Supra. The fastest done by the Mercedes was a 133.1, one second slower. And let's take a look at the fastest uh, lap time in the world, see what we can learn. So the Mercedes one second slower on the leaderboard, that doesn't necessarily mean it is one second slower. It just means someone, I mean, it's not a fair test because it's not the same driver. But it does show you that the Supra is definitely quicker, unquestionably quicker. Um, but we can learn a thing or two about the lines you can take, especially through the chicane, as I uh, briefly touched upon a couple of times. And you can see here, the utter filth on show. It is just how the game is, unfortunately. But look at this. Keeping a couple of pixels on the curb, but the rest of the car can be on the grass. Not once, but twice. And that's how you carry the most amount of speed through there. And you can honestly gain like half a second by doing that compared to just taking it normally. Uh, let's say with all four wheels uh, not on the grass. But there you go. Now, now it was my turn to try to replicate such an egregious act, and it was actually really not as easy as it looks. And this is the, you know, this is the thing with the number one replays; they always make it look easy, but when you try it, it's never quite the same. And well, I was just trying to get comfortable with what it felt like to run the grass. Eventually, getting my lap down, uh, lap time down to one thirty-four point one, and just learning, you know, against the ghost. That's my own ghost just where I can carry a bit more speed and I, I really think this is the best way to learn you know just by racing against your ghost or someone else's ghost who's a bit quicker and just seeing exactly where you can gain against the ghost 
normally does help. So with a lap time there of 134.002, taking a nice narrow line, and you can see definitely gaining against the Ghost, but just over the course of this S's, the uphill section, the Ghost beginning to get away. So yes, you can gain through the corner, but you might lose on the exit. So these are things you have to consider. So 23.7, for me, I think in this car, that was a good first uh, split sector time. So I was quite happy with that. And as we've, as we've mentioned many times, this is the killer part of the track. <laughs> this is where it really goes very well or goes completely wrong. Let's see what we can do here. Carrying the speed, running the grass, and just getting a bit unstable there. And just kind of just having to back out slightly. But through here, I definitely carried a lot more speed through. Got a much better line and actually gained back on the Ghost. And so I knew that with this lap time it was it was a very difficult track because there are lots of technical corners it's not easy to really hook up every corner so this lap is going to be an improvement by over a tenth to a 133.8 but i knew i could definitely go quicker this is my faster lap of the race a little bit wide actually through turn one but coming back for that later apex where you can get on the power a little bit earlier running the full extent of the curb probably lost a tiny bit to the ghost First set, uh, first split sector time of a 0.8, so slightly slower than what I can do, but not too far away, so I'm happy. Good exit here, definitely closer to the ghost. And now let's see what we can do through the triple chicane, the chicane of death of Kyoto. Carry the speed in off the brake, carry the speed back on the power, having to run the grass on the second part, which I wasn't normally doing. I've definitely gained on the ghost right up behind it. When you set a three-tenth difference to the ghost, you're definitely not this close at the start of the lap. And so I've definitely gained. Uh, so I normally set my ghost to 0.3 second gap. Now, uh, 105.7, that's about as quick as I've done it so far through the second split. Then this awkward left. Let's see what we can do. Not as good as the ghost. You can see it just slightly pulls away once again, but I can definitely improve here through the final corner. Just carrying the speed into the apex and gaining on the entry, I might lose a slight bit on the exit, but overall I'd say I, I, I would have gained. And so let's run to the line. It's going to be an improvement by more than 10. It's going to be a 133.672. And that time put me only P9 for this next race. This was actually a very competitive lobby. Lots of people were very quick times. I needed ideally a 0.5 or, you know, or, or quicker and then I could have been well inside the top five on the grid. Um, but the standard was quite high on this on this session. Lots of fast players with good lap times. Plus, I wasn't using the Supra for my qualifying time, which always makes it a bit harder. And I have no doubt that I could have gone at least three or, ten, three or four tenths faster had I done that. But I, uh, you know, the, the whole point of this video, the whole premise, is to test this new Mercedes. So Tishney here, side by side with Bob's your uncle GT. And I managed to engineer this position here to get on the left-hand side and move up into P7. So this, this was actually quite an interesting race. It was closely fought and very engaging, quite fun. So past Tijani, who's using the Lamborghini Huracan, going for the anti-meta. Now here, I, I, I'm just a little bit too hot on the brakes. And you have to be a lot more delicate with your braking input uh, since the recent physics update. So that was a little bit too aggressive and it lost me a handful of positions moving back down to P10, unfortunately. Uh, yellow flag here, so I'm about to gain one more position. Uh, Frenchman doing a nice little uh, pirouette and deploying a smoke grenade across the circuit. Uh, and then uh, once again, this pinch point at the top of the track, a couple of cars, including Tijni, in an altercation, and that's going to move me back into P7 with an immediate sight of P5. And so what looked like uh, a race where we had a massive downturn and it looked like it was gonna be very difficult to gain positions, I managed to hang in there and be a little bit more patient. And we could get back to a P5. Up behind Bob Jerunkle underscore GT, up against F4H underscore super underscore GT, just in front Thunder Dragon GT. But anyway, finished P7, thought, Let's whip out the machine. Scott Chegg. Scott Speed is back in the building. Heading over to the Americas. Always good fun. Let's give it a go. Starting dead last. But I'm sure 
we will not be finishing here. Let's see. As um, we head over to the American servers, always a good laugh. Let's give it a go. Up behind another Mercedes here, using the, the lovely BWT livery, uh, the Canadian. is going to run a little bit wide and hand me P15. So one position already. I'll thankfully take that one. Up the hill, bit of contact between the, uh, the two cars in front. And this gap was open and I was approaching. I wasn't sure if I should go for it. And this guy braked really early, so I thought, okay, I will send it. He performs a textbook old switcheroo and appears back on my left-hand side. Absolutely beautiful. Crofty going absolutely ballistic in the commentary box. Down into the chicane. Just trying to be nice and careful here. And look at this. The two of us just giving each other space through here. It's just really beautiful to witness. A couple of cars there. Very slow. And that's going to be P12. And it looks like Salt Merchant GT. A bit slow on the inside. Trying to engineer position here. And, uh, well, I don't even know what happened there. Uh, just uh, getting pushed into the wrong position at the wrong time. As does that Brazilian. Having a perpendicular meeting with Barry R. As we head down into the, the awkward left. And that guy is going straight on. What is going on? So much stuff is happening. And I can't even keep up. Up into P10 though, that's not too bad at all, given we started 16th. Now up behind Roger, can we get past this guy? He's in the Mustang, which is not a commonly chosen car, but it's good to see it being utilised here. Across the line we go to start P2, trying to keep him as narrow as possible, but to be fair to him, Roger, keeps it nice and narrow on the inside, gets a good line, and doesn't falter on this occasion. So it took me an entire lap until this moment to really stand a chance of trying to get past this guy. He went in way too hot into the final corner, lap number two. And that's going to be uh, going to be me up to P9. Now, catching up with this uh, group in front. Went in way too hot here, almost in the back of the Supra. Salt Merchant GT getting all out of hand on the curb and going to lose control and a handful of positions behind Manimal now, looking up the inside. Not always the best place to go for a move, but I'm Scott Speed on this occasion, and so any place is a good is a good place for him. That's going to be seventh place with 1.3 seconds to P6, make that 0.6 as we head into lap number four. Two laps left to go, and P6 looks a somewhat realistic prospect here, especially as he's drifted wide onto the grass very easy to do that as we head up the hill into the slipstream now the Mercedes is actually pretty good in the tow and we're going to look for this move on the left hand side there it is it doesn't turn in and boom make sure we don't run too wide prevents the old switcheroo that's exactly what's happened 2.3 seconds to the group in front but by the uh, start here of lap number five the final lap of the race I was definitely in with the shout of gaining a few positions. Now this moment here kind of really screwed me up as I went into the back of this guy and that was really bad timing as you know I had some good momentum there and it really slowed me down but we get the move done. We've still got half a lap here or more than to try and catch up to these two guys in front. 0.8 seconds of the gap. If we can really take the chicane nicely then I'll be certainly in a much better position. So through here, actually third place takes a really bad line, actually slows the pair of them down. And I'm going to gain massively here. Look at this. As we head towards the hairpin, looking for this big text on the, on the ground. At the end of that, that's where we want to kind of break. And uh, that's a pretty poor move there from Purple. Just try, I don't even know what he's trying. Uh, I can't even explain that attempt. It goes way too wide. And that's going to be me up into P4. Can we get on the podium from 16th on the grid? The space is afforded by Minute Maid, and I'm going to take that invitation and say thank you very much. Boom, up into P3. Something happened between first and second place, as you can see there, and in the end, I'm only going to be two seconds away from first place. But Scott Speed doing the business once again, setting the faster lap of the race, and coming through for a beautiful podium. Thank you so much for watching. Please do check out my merch, which is coming up very soon. Link in the description and on the screen. I shall see you next time. Goodbye.